I think it's perfect this Sunday that we talk about John the Baptist. Because where does John the Baptist live? He lives in the wilderness. And as we uh, stand up here and as I'm with the kids, I look about and I feel like I'm kind of in the wilderness as I see all the little trees. And it is a, uh, it was a joy to be able to have the children to lead us in worship. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, for you are our rock and our redeemer. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Every Christmas season we uh, encounter John the Baptist. and I think John the Baptist is a, an interesting character in all of Scripture because we find out that he, he's kind of an outcast. He, he did his own thing. He felt more comfortable hanging out with the little trees than being in the uh, city of Jerusalem and in the temple and, and in the synagogues with the religious leaders. And John the Baptist, uh, he wore um, clothes made out of camel hair and he ate locusts and and he was just kind of, he did life his own way. He kind of uh, went along to the beat of a different drummer. And, and every Christmas, we find John the Baptist. And he is proclaiming, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. And we find John the Baptist standing on the river side of the Jordan, baptizing people, inviting them into a life of repentance, a life where they seek to follow God. And that's what the Advent season's all about. Preparing ourselves to live a life where Christ lives in us. Preparing ourselves to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ to the rest of the world. And so when the leaders of the synagogue, the Pharisees and the Levites come to John the Baptist and they ask him one question. And and it's a question that really carries a lot of weight, and it's a very personal question. They ask John the Baptist, who are you? And if you think about it, when someone asks you that question, who are you? That's one of the most personal questions you could ever be asked. Because they're asking, you know, what do you do? What do you believe? Who is your family? What are you willing to take a stand for? That when someone asks, who are you? They're inviting you to share your life with them. And I've found in the uh, last couple of months, as I've been the pastor here at Point Hope, that I'll encounter strangers. And many times the conversation will begin and we'll kind of talk about, you know, well, how long have you been here in Mount Pleasant? I'm like, well, been here a couple of months now. And they're like, well, what brought you to Mount Pleasant? Well, you know, uh, my job brought me here. And then they're like, well, well, what do you do? I'm like, oh, I'm a pastor. And, And every time I let someone know, you know, I am a pastor, it's almost like the whole conversation like stops. And, and, and they look at me like I'm an alien. And they, they're like, are, are you like a pastor pastor? I don't know what a pastor pastor is. But I've been asked multiple times, are you a pastor pastor? And, and they're like, like, do you preach? And do you, I'm like, yes, that's, uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a pastor, I preach, I'm a minister. And then it always, they, they will ask me just the most random questions. It's like they had this one question about the Bible. And they've been waiting to ask somebody. And now it's like, you know, I'm sent from God to them so that they can ask this question or, or get this piece of advice. Because they are interested with who I am. And really, as the church, we have a chance to be the hands and feet of Christ. And I believe that when we go out into our community, and when we share God's love with other people, people are going to see us filled with joy, filled with love. And I believe that when we are the church, people will stop and say, who are you? And who are we? We're all children of God. And that is the greatest gift of the Christmas season, is that we remember that God came into the world, that God became one of us, so that we could follow God, and so that God could live within us, and so that we can go and do God's work in the world. And so the Christmas season is a time when we remember who we are, that we are like John the Baptist, that we have one job and one mission, and that is to testify and to witness to the light of Jesus Christ, to say that my life has been changed by God. That I lived in darkness, but the light of Christ shined into my life. 
that I did not know what hope was. And then I met Jesus Christ and found that there is hope in him. I did not know what it what means to love until I found that God loved me. And so we're given a holy, all-inspiring mission of telling people that the light of Christ shines into the darkness. And John tells us that the darkness will not overcome it. And so the Christmas season is a time where the light shines and where we rejoice in knowing that Jesus came into this world because he loves us and because he wants us to live in his light and he wants us to allow his light to shine through us. This past week I was reading a blog and I read a story that, that just made me stop and shake my head. It was a pastor in another state, and he was at his local Starbucks. And he was overhearing a conversation at Starbucks. As you all know, when you're in Starbucks, it's really close, so you can always uh, find out what's going on in the world. And there was these two guys who were just upset. And so the pastor's sitting there, and he hears these two guys, and they're just really frustrated. And then he kind of starts paying a little bit more attention, and he finds out what they're upset about. And they say, well, you know, I just, I just hate the Christmas season because it's the time of the year when religious people shove their religion down our throats. And they want to talk about Jesus and they want to talk about how he's the light of the world and they keep going on and on. And finally one of the guys is like, yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree. And they're like, you know what they should do? They should leave our Christmas alone and go invent their own holiday. During this Christmas season, we can begin to think that it's all about me. It's all about what I'm going to get or, or what I can do for my family. It's all about what I can grab and what I can hold on to. I remember as a little kid walking down the stairs on Christmas morning thinking about, what all have I gotten? But John the Baptist reminds us, it's not about me. It's about the light. It's about Jesus Christ. And that is the joy of Christianity, that we learn that there is something so much greater than trying to take everything for ourselves, but rather we learn that we are called to give, and it's in that giving that the light of Christ shines through us. And so I invite you over these next couple of weeks as we prepare for Christmas morning, and as we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That we think about how can we give ourselves? How can we as a church be a witness to the light of Christ that has shined into our lives? How can we tell others that there is a God who loves us so much that he came and became one of us so that we may find true joy, true love, and true hope? And as we look around, there is a whole lot of darkness in this world. But we are convinced that the light of Christ shines through us. Let us pray. Lord, for your Son, we are so very thankful. We are so thankful to know that we are a beloved child of yours. That you look down upon us and that you are happy with us. And Lord, we thank you for the gift of your children who lead us in worship to see the joy of your Son on their face. We thank you for the time to be able to come together as your body and to lift our voices in praise of you. And Lord, as we walk about these weeks with, filled with the holiday cheer, remind us that there are people in our community who are hurting. There are people who are hungry. There are people who have not been able to find a job in a while. And Father, use us to be able to share that holiday cheer with them, to be able to be your light in the darkness. And we pray for all of those who are grieving and who are mourning and who are undergoing sickness and illness this time. That, Father, it's so hard to be grieving in a time where everyone else is happy. And we pray that you can use us, your children, to comfort, to be with those who are in need of a friend, who are in need of the love of Christ, to help them through this season. And so we lift up all of those who are sick, all of those who are undergoing difficult times, and we pray that they may come to find you this holiday season. And we pray for those in our community who have yet to come to know you, 
Use our church, Lord, so that people may enter into a relationship with you and discover that the light is good and that your life is wonderful. And Lord, we thank you again for your Son, who came to teach us to seek that the kingdom of heaven is the most glorious thing, who taught us how to love, and who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen.